Hi, again, my name is Sofia Erasmo, and I am one of the inventors in the technology I am presenting today. We eat a lot of meat. In North America, the uh, processed meat market is huge. And uh, recently, due to concerns on wellness and health, there has been a big push in the development of plant-based foods. Um, uh, some of the, uh, among the plant-based foods that are being developed, dairy and meat products are, are one of the top trends. So there is, um, food processors are now, have a, have a big uh, problem on their hands now. Because this is the face of my friends when I tell them that, I, that I'm working uh, on veggie burgers. So <laughs> even though we know that, the, know that plant-based foods are better for us, we are still deterred the, the from trying them or adopting, or adopting them as a regular um, product in our diets. So in order to um, manufacture more appealing and mouth-watering veggie burgers, the food processors are making use of a number of ingredients in order to mimic the color and taste of, um, of, of meat burgers into the meat analogs. Some of these ingredients are beet, um, celery juices, as well as anato. A premium ingredient that is currently being used by the producers of meat analogs is soy hemoglobin. This is a oxygen transporting protein that is in animals and it also occurs in plants and other microorganisms, however, in very small amounts. Uh, one of the, uh, one of the uh, things that distinguishes soy hemoglobin from the, sorry, from the other ingredients that are currently being used to provide color to meat analogs is the fact that it also contributes to the flavor of meat analogs. Plant hemoglobin is a, serves as precursor or base for uh, development of beef flavor when, when veggie burgers are cooked. One of the, one of the uh, technological issues that are being faced with all of these um, natural coloring ingredients is that they tend to be very fragile or uh, sensitive to light exposure. This happens especially with soy hemoglobin. So hemoglobin, when exposed to light, turns brown very quickly. And none of us want to buy a brown product of the off-the-shelf life. Why is this? We, uh, we as consumers make decisions of whether, whether purchase a product based on, their, on the appearance. And in the case of meats, color is one of the major attributes that the consumer uses to define whether they are buying a um, product or not. So product uh, uh, color discoloration results in uh, the need to discount products and uh, before they go completely uh, bad and, and represent a total loss of sale. Now, because of this, because of this issue with uh, color, uh, with color fading in, in, of natural coloring agents, the food, uh, the meat analogs have been relegated all the way to the back of the, of, of the grocery store. In this case, uh, meat analogs are kept in the, fro in the frozen area section, very well protected, from light, but this, all of this also protects them and keeps them away from the eyesight of the consumer who has to travel all the way, all the way through the store in order to get their meat analogs. So what if, what if we were able to stabilize the color of plant hemoglobin uh, in such a way that the meat analogs containing this uh, premium ingredient could be display in the store right next to their main competitors, fresh, fresh meat products. What if? 
Well, our, our lab has been working on this issue and we have come up with two different strategies. One is a plant hemoglobin which source is clover instead of soybean and uh, a natural stabilizer. This natural stabilizer works um, protecting the color not only of soy hemoglobin, but it can also protect the color of, um, of I'm sorry, this stabilizer protects the color not only of, of clover hemoglobin, but also the color of soy hemoglobin that is currently being used in a, in a product that is already in the market. Our, our clover hemoglobin remains, um, retains its color about two times as much as soy hemoglobin when exposed to uh, commercial conditions of lighting during nine days. And well, this is uh, something that uh, we are very excited about because with this, uh, with this ability to protect the color of, uh, so of plant hemoglobin uh, would allow meat analogs to be displayed right next to the uh, fresh meat in the supermarket, as well as reduce costs due to formulation, using formulation and uh, losses uh, due to color fading during, during um, retail. Uh, right now, we are able to produce a plant, the, our clover plant hemoglobin in the lab, and we are working towards scaling it up and, um, and increasing the yield. To this day, uh, we have filed two patent applications, and um, we have obtained uh, WARF accelerator funding to uh, advance and bring this technology to the market. We are also receiving a startup mentorship, and on the business side, we have uh, participated in the G-Beta program, a business accelerator uh, in, in here in Madison, and the innovation to market program from D2P on campus. What we are looking for is for mentors in the uh, food industry to help us to bring this, this technology to the market. Again, my name is Sofia Erazo, and I work with Dr. Mark Richards, and the other inventors of this technology are scientists from Iowa State University. Together, we bring expertise in food science and in the areas of plant and animal hemoglobins. Thank you very much. Questions? Yeah. I would imagine that there might be a, a dozens of different plant hemoglobins. How did you pick the clover? Uh, well, uh, the expertise uh, from Dr. Hargrove and uh, Dr. Mark Richards, uh, they uh, look, uh, thought that the a structure of this particular hemoglobin could, could make it uh, light stable. It's a matter of uh, the size, the, the uh, yeah, the size, the sequence of amino acids, uh, and yeah, it's, it's uh, based on the structure of this, of this uh, protein, yeah. So I have a question. Yeah. You're, you're not like picking clover and recovering it. Can you talk about a little no. bit how you are get, how, you, how you're producing that protein today? Thank you, thank you very much. So yeah, the hemoglobin is present in plants, but it's mostly in the roots, and it's in very small amounts. So what we are doing to make this protein in the lab is uh, the, the uh, gene was inserted in a host that uh, in this case is a, is a uh, yeast, and then through a fermentation process we produce, uh, we are producing this So that was what protein. your picture was of a fermentation process to make the protein? Correct. Very yeah. good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Nice job, Sophia. Thank you.